Greetings. Today is Friday, July 26, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I would like to talk about the cyclonic activity anticipated during the upcoming week in the eastern Pacific, where so far we have had the least active hurricane season on record. This is mainly due to the transition from neutral ENSO conditions to La Nina, which typically results in unfavorable conditions for cyclone formation in the eastern Pacific. Even so, we saw the development of tropical storm bud, which remained quite weak as a tropical storm, and last night lost thunderstorm coverage near its center of circulation. Therefore, it is very likely that it will dissipate today. Thus, tropical storm bud does little to compensate for the low cyclonic activity we've seen this year in the eastern Pacific. However, some changes are expected over the next seven days that could generate the formation of one or two tropical cyclones. We will discuss their potential trajectories, the effects on western Mexico and Central America, and how this activity might influence Atlantic activity. The Atlantic and eastern Pacific have been quite inactive in recent weeks, thanks to an unfavorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation that keeps the air quite dry and stable over the eastern Pacific and Atlantic. Atlantic, while favoring cyclonic activity in the western Pacific. However, this zone of instability will continue moving east until it eventually reaches the eastern Pacific and Atlantic regions, where we anticipate a very active August, particularly for the Atlantic. Here we can see how, during the first week of August, a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation will establish over the eastern Pacific, which may favor the formation of some cyclones southwest of Mexico. Although the first week of August seems to favor cyclonic formation in the eastern Pacific, notice that conditions in the Atlantic could become marginally favorable for development, and we cannot rule out the development of a tropical cyclone during the first week of August. During this period, the Atlantic's cyclonic activity will depend on how active the eastern Pacific is, as cyclones in the Pacific typically mean inactivity in the Atlantic. Once cyclonic activity in the Pacific ends, we see better development probabilities in the Atlantic, likely during the second and third weeks of August. When we look at the latest tropical outlook from the National Hurricane Center, we see tropical storm bud, which will soon dissipate and did not pose a threat to Mexico. They have also marked an area with low development probability south of Michoacan, Guerrero, and Colima where another tropical storm could develop in the next seven days. Some models already project favorable conditions for the formation of at least two or three tropical storms over the next 10 days. Most members of the American model favor trajectories moving west-northwest, away from the western coast of Mexico and Central America. Thus, the projected increase in cyclonic activity for the first week of August follows a pattern where trajectories favor open waters in the Pacific. We will closely monitor how strong these tropical cyclones might become, as models diverge on whether they will become hurricanes or remain weak, like tropical storm bud. For instance, the American GFS model definitely sees the development of two tropical cyclones, predicting two hurricanes in the first week of August over open Pacific waters. This would represent a significant increase in cyclonic activity compared to recent months. On the other hand, the European model, while seeing the development of two tropical cyclones, keeps them as weak tropical storms. Thus we have a significant difference between the aggressive GFS model, which strengthens these cyclones into hurricanes, and the European model, which keeps them as weak tropical storms. This difference is crucial, as if several hurricanes form in the eastern Pacific, the Atlantic will likely be inactive in the first week of August. However, if these tropical cyclones remain weak, it opens a window for the Atlantic to start seeing cyclonic activity in the first week of August. Over the coming days, we will observe how cyclones develop in the eastern Pacific and, more importantly how strong they become. Regardless of their strength, a period of moisture and rain is anticipated for central southern Mexico and much of Central America, with accumulated rainfall estimates between 100 and 200 millimeters over the next seven days. The heaviest rainfall should remain towards the west and over Pacific waters. As the first week of August approaches, significant changes are expected for the Atlantic, as conditions gradually become more favorable for cyclonic activity. We continue to project a hyperactive August, mainly due to a very favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, establishing instability across the African continent and the Indian Ocean from the second week of August. This could create extremely favorable conditions for tropical cyclone formation in the Atlantic. Projections suggest this favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation will continue throughout August and into September, indicating a period of high cyclonic activity as predicted in recent months, largely due to extremely hot temperatures in the main cyclonic development area. With this passing instability related to the Madden-Julian Oscillation, 
We also anticipate that concentrations of Saharan dust will dramatically decrease during the first and second weeks of August, opening opportunities for tropical waves to strengthen and develop into cyclones as they move into the Caribbean. While optimal development conditions seem to be from the second and third weeks of August, conditions will be marginally favorable in the first week. And models like the European model already show the possibility of a tropical depression developing near the Bahamas by the end of next week. In the Atlantic, we will be closely watching this region as models suggest that a strong tropical wave might find marginally favorable development conditions over the Bahamas by the end of next week. In the next video, I will discuss this forecast and review the latest model projections. It is important for those in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and Florida to stay tuned for the next video. To ensure you don't miss it, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red subscribe button, and then click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. Well, that's all for now. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend.